Hey guys, welcome back to Vito's Garage. Thanks so much for watching and tuning in. And in this video, I'm gonna show you uh, some tips on the replacement of the ignition tumbler on your old school Mercedes and also other cars that you have that may have the similar, the similar type of ignition tumbler. And I'll show you some uh, maintenance items that you need to actually do every once in a while on these things. And uh, yeah, let's go to the video and I'll show you everything on this car. The ignition tumbler is actually like pretty sticky, so I'm gonna be replacing it with a new one. And I'll show you some tips on what to do if you have some difficulties trying to take one of these out. Good! Good job, man! Alright guys, so I'm sitting in a 240D and I'm doing some repairs. I gotta replace this uh, um, actuator, I'm sorry, uh, the ignition tumbler uh, because my key is just so sticky uh, and it's really hard to turn the key uh, and you know I can't really tell. It could be also like the problem with the lock, uh, the whole lock assembly but it can also uh, be the tumbler itself. and. Um, also if you guys are replacing one of these and you insert this clip all the way in when the key is in position two and you cannot turn this um you know the the this uh this thing the metal uh, the black metal uh housing um that screws on here like it if it just like doesn't uh come really like released then uh, long story short like I had a problem I was uh, struggling a little bit with this because you know I put the key to the second ignition and uh, I inserted the clip and everything was fine and uh, you know this thing would not release I was not able to turn it uh, counterclockwise so what I had to do is I just had to play around with it so what I then later what I did is uh, you know, I, I inserted the clip and then I just started like going around like this while trying to release um, this uh, uh, this black metal piece. So, and right now it's turning backwards, okay, counterclockwise. So it's all released. So basically, you don't really need. Actually, you will still need the clip, but uh, for now, uh, you can keep on screwing this. And also. Uh, there's another piece that goes around there is this guy so long story short when you try to remove this uh, chrome clip um, the trim pieces you have to be really careful because it has three um, it has three clips and one of these is bent a little bit so I'll have to bend it back but you have to uh, basically use a plastic tool and try to pry it out very carefully from each side and uh, otherwise you, you you will break the clips and uh, yeah so you'll do that and then so that's some tips for you guys you know if you can remove uh, if it this doesn't get released this black metal uh, piece doesn't get released you have to just kind of like you know wiggle it and then like move the spring uh, I mean uh, the, the circlip um, you know and eventually it's gonna come uh, undone um, and I was also like brainstorming I was like why is this not coming loose you know why I can't turn it it's just like uh, stuck you know and my clip is inserted 
so yeah if you have any uh, troubles with this just kind of like move it around and eventually it will uh, it will actually push that uh, lock inside of this tumbler and it, this uh, black piece will get released and you will be able to turn it counterclockwise this is pretty much all the way out okay this metal piece it's all loose okay and now we just have to again uh, find that sweet spot and release this thing all together I can tell that this is probably original and I think I don't know if it's ever been replaced like, I feel like it's never been done trying to be really careful because this key is really fragile too I don't know whoever cut this key I mean this is this is some aftermarket key for this car there you go Ooh, look at this guys this is actually original a Mercedes tumbler and yeah looks like uh, previous people whoever owned this car they were probably trying to replace this tumbler too and they were using this is why this uh, black piece is rusty that's because they tried uh, they tried to actually like uh, loosen it up but I guess that it didn't work out uh, for them so they probably used uh, some channel locks too to try to help uh, and turn this thing counterclockwise but it didn't work for them so they just left it like this that's why it's rusty I me mean, usually these are not rusty and when i got this car and this was rusty i'm like why is this rusty um so that was that was really strange so anyway so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm actually gonna sand this down all this rust off and i'll probably soak this in uh some vinegar overnight so all the rust can come off so i can actually paint it later so it's gonna be beautiful and yeah there's a lot of grease right here too so and there's also a lot of grease in there and junk so i'll have to clean that up all right guys so i have a couple of uh um cylinders ignition cylinders here in my hands and uh, some tools I uh, have the circ uh, the clip right there uh, so what I want to show you is I want to show you the difference between a brand new uh, ignition cylinder and um, the old one that I just pulled off um, and uh, you know also usually like what happens is uh, there's a lot of junk that gets inside of the uh, ignition cylinder um, and that's why you know it's hard for you to turn the key or also uh, a lot of times it's not really the cylinder that goes bad actually the key just like wears out and gets rounded off and it's it's not good so I'm going to show you some differences right now and uh, just so you guys can see uh, how um, you know basically old versus new all right guys so this is the old original cylinder okay so it's in a position one right now i'm gonna try to turn the key now there you go so it turned but it was sticky at first so it kind of it's sticky at first guys like right there if you can see I try to wiggle it now it turns Okay. but at first it just it's sticky so I think it's just the problem with the bunch of junk inside and the key is just rounded off okay now this is a new one okay check this out see this thing it just moves nicely back and forth no problem so that's your new one and the old one that you just saw Two of them, okay. All right, guys. Now, when I try to test the whole ignition lock assembly, uh, not the tumbler, but the ignition lock assembly, uh, I'll just grab this big screwdriver and we're gonna try and turn it and just check, see how it feels. Grab the screwdriver; it's inside, and 
let's go ahead and uh, turn it right now see how it feels feels good spring uh, is good springs back when you try to crank it the battery is off by the way so the engine uh, nothing is gonna crank here so yeah but as far as position so this is zero this is one this is your accessories and then crank so yeah everything is working perfect here uh, I mean I don't have any I don't see any problems so that's perfect guys so we just need a new tumbler pretty much and the key so that's what we're gonna do and like I said this is what I was using I was using the circlip uh, from the keychain so you can all uh, make one uh, you don't need to buy anything online or anything like that so this is pretty cool and uh, before I reinstall everything back like I said I'm gonna clean this up and make it nice paint it black and I'm gonna clean that area and everything and grease everything up before installation all right guys just wanted to show you really quick what happens when you insert the clip uh, this is in this case this is the old uh, um, lock tumbler so when you insert it all the way as you can see uh, it's not like compressed all the way so what you need to do is you need to turn the clip see when I turn the sir clip I mean the the paper clip I'm sorry um, this thing actually moves okay because it's you have to actually turn it in order for this thing to be uh, able to release completely or go flush with the surface otherwise sometimes I mean it depends like new uh, ignition cylinders usually you just insert the sir clip and pretty much goes this thing like the lock um, goes down but like on some old ones you have to like kind of uh, wiggle the uh, paper clip in there and just kind of move it around in order for this thing to um, you know get flush with that other surface and uh, for you to be able to release this mechanism so what a beautiful day to work on a car not too hot not too cold anyways guys so I have um, uh, my metal piece that I was talking about as you can see it's all um, pretty much sanded down what I what I'm gonna do now is just put it um, in a vinegar for like 24 to 48 hours and that's gonna uh, eat this whole rust the rest of the rust away and we'll see uh, how it comes out afterwards and I might have to do some more sanding but the final product is gonna be actually really nice um, I have some paint for it prepared as well so it's gonna be awesome all right guys so here's my restored um, you know metal piece uh, and it used to be so rusty so what I did is uh, I cleaned it all up and I sanded it and I, I also applied uh, like a rust dissolver and if you guys want to use a rust dissolver I'll actually leave the link down below so you guys can go ahead and purchase it it's actually pretty good stuff so after sanding it uh, with a sandpaper I mean I noticed there was still some rust left so I applied that rust dissolver and actually um, made a huge difference uh, after letting it sit um, it kind of ate all that rust so after that I just you know wiped everything down cleaned it and then painted it at the end so it looks really nice right now uh, so I'll have something uh, looking uh, this good on my car because it used to be really rusty and ugly looking Alright guys, so I have some ATF and I'm going to be actually lubricating this brand new ignition tumbler before reinstalling it. So I'm going to set it like this and I'm going to slowly pour some ATF inside. And let it soak um, for a little bit. And then I'm going to grab the key, turn it back and forth, you know and all that so that way it's going to be nicely lubricated guys and then if you want you can add some grease i mean some people say that it's you know collects dirt it may collect dirt but it's actually not too horrible you know it's better than you know having it just dry but automatic trans fluid is actually pretty good too that's a really good lubricant so 
you can use that or you can use a combination of both all right guys so this has been soaking for a little while uh, so i'll be reinstalling that and i also put a lot of grease in there so it's gonna be awesome and i'll just show you really quick how to reinstall this all right it's like the whole assembly has to go in together and you have to have this homemade special tool all right so simply just gonna go ahead and reinstall it okay so when you're installing it make sure this circle is pushed in and then you just kind of start your black piece first and then you push this okay in so while you're turning you turn this a little bit this black piece and then uh, you push the key in a little more after turning the black one and just keep turning it okay so after you turn this black piece you gotta make sure that those one two and three those basically those points on that trim piece on that uh, metal pieces uh, basically it has to line up it has to be exactly the same li like it was before so you just have to kind of line it up uh, it's basically your off position and um, ACC position and crank position there's three um, indentations right there and uh, as you know uh, this is in second position ACC right now the key so it has to actually uh, match up with that second uh, indent so right now after you do that uh, you can pull out your clip carefully there you go the clip is out and okay that's it so right now this metal piece cannot turn anymore and we're gonna test to make sure our key is working properly all right so my battery is off right now and here's the key okay and i'm gonna put the key in position second and then this would be a crank position okay so and as you can see the ignition tumbler is perfect i mean like it's it's not sticking or anything like that pretty much it's a lot smoother than the last one that was originally here um you know as of right now it's going to be like this and it's it's a lot better because before that as you saw i showed you you had to like wiggle the key before it would turn so it was a bad tumbler actually so we're gonna go ahead and see in the future we're probably gonna uh order um, the original one from the dealership so we can get a new key because this is aftermarket part um, but as of right now it works perfect uh, it's good and we're gonna know that it's gonna be fine it's not gonna cause any issues down the road so right now I'm gonna reconnect the battery for you guys and then we're gonna try to start it I don't know if it's gonna start because I think that the battery is dead uh, but we're gonna try anyways at least to show you that the lights come on and all that Also, uh, make sure your key is out of the ignition before you reconnect the battery. It's really important. Like always, check the oil before starting. As you can see down there, guys, I replaced the clutch and brake pedal pads. So they look awesome right now because they used to be really worn out. So anyways, Go ahead and try to start it. Okay, the lights come on. This is just really bright outside, so you can barely he see that. There's the glow plug light went off. And then clutch in. Perfect. Okay, look at that. She's running. Uh, brake light is on because my parking brake is uh, depressed. And that's it. I'm going to let you listen to that amazing OM616. Amazing engine, guys. 
OM616 and OM617, best engines in the world. Shout out to this baby, to this W126 with OM617 turbo in it. So yeah, million mile engines guys. So if you have one of these cars, please take care of them. Uh, love them, give them all the love, doesn't matter how much uh, work they need. Um, just please, you know, love these cars because we're getting less and less of these cars available because people just keep scrapping them, which is really sad. So I picked this one up uh, quite a while ago, um, last year, and it's in a pretty bad shape. It needs floors welded and a bunch of other stuff. I'm actually removing some sound deadening from the floors and finding out some rust holes and all that stuff. But uh, she's getting saved. She's gonna be uh, fixed up, guys. So yeah, if you have one of these cars, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, whatever old school Mercedes you have, whether it's W123, W116, W126, W124, on all those cars even w210 please save those cars guys i mean they're amazing cars uh nobody makes such great cars anymore so yeah and here i'm gonna show you how it shuts off okay there you go shut off and one final thing is this trim that we're gonna reinstall three clips be very careful and go really slow all the way around okay all right guys so there's the final product okay uh and make sure when you uh, re you know replace this um uh, chrome trim piece just be really careful go all the way around and there's actually a seal on the inside so it has to like push into the dashboard uh so that way it's sitting flush um and yeah guys that's that's about it for the repairs all right, guys, um, just a couple more tips. When you, if you're trying to turn the key and it doesn't turn at all, like you would put it in and it just doesn't turn, it's completely stuck. Uh, so here's what you should do. You should, uh, you know, of course, try to wiggle the key and make sure your steering wheel is not locked. All right, because sometimes when it gets locked, it's hard to turn this. So you have to, while you turn the key, you have to kind of wiggle the steering wheel. And then also, uh, you know, you can spray some WD-40 in there and try to wiggle the key again. And um, also what you can do is, uh, you know, you can apply some kind of vibration to the key just so you can turn it. Uh, but if you're unlucky, for example, if you're just unlucky, like you, if you can't turn this thing at all, if you've tried so many different things and all that, uh, then you're gonna have to basically drill out you're going to have to remove that um, kick panel underneath and you have to like f locate that a whole uh, ignition lock assembly and you're going to have to drill out one of those pins and you're going to have to drop this uh, steering column and all the other stuff and long story short you're going to have to uh, replace this a uh, whole ignition lock cylinder um, so that's unfortunate but sometimes it happens so if you have a sticky key just make sure you replace it asap uh, I recommend getting uh, a new key first because uh, usually what happens is the key uh, gets worn out and it's just the key that's the problem, not the actual lock cylinder. So go to your dealership and have them cut your new key because that's what I'm going to do to this car. This is an aftermarket ignition uh, uh, tumbler and a key. Um, that's just temporarily. Right now what I had I'm, I was going to install just because the old one was so sticky. So. Uh, later on, I'm gonna actually get a new ignition cylinder and a lock from Mercedes-Benz So I'm gonna have a brand new key and a brand new lock pretty much. I might actually order two brand new keys just in case um, So yeah, a couple tips for you guys. Thanks All right guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching uh, If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my channel like this video uh, And I will see you in the next one and don't forget to check out my social media accounts and if you have any questions you can contact me i like making new friends and car enthusiasts it's awesome i love talking and uh, socializing so thank you so much once again and don't forget das beste oder nichts <laughs>